she was a champion in so many ways and she was fierce and a boss. And I think she wants us to tell this story. It's a really wonderful documentary. And I wanted to know, Natasha, what inspired you to want to do this now? I mean, is that because this is obviously where, you know, we all know Nellie Wood's story. You know, we know we are still, you know, she's still missed. And, but what made you want to go back into this territory? I think really for me, what inspired me to make this documentary is that I became a mother in 2012. My daughter is seven and I don't want her to have to go through the speculation that I've gone through in my life. I want to clear it up for her. I sort of see myself as the bridge between my daughter and my mother. So it's really important to me that um, also my, my stepdad is turning 90. I want to clear it up for him. He'll be 90 on February 10th. Um, I, 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 it feels like a duty for me, a good duty. Um, and I am in a place in my life where I'm, I, I am stabilized emotionally. I'm, you know, and I, I feel that I can look at her life object, a little more objectively and from the perspective of a healed motherless daughter. Um, for so many years, I was so private about my mom because it was painful and because of the media speculation. Um, but I feel safe in the world. And so I feel like I can put her out there. And I also think that she was amazing, you know, and I walk around knowing how incredible she was, but not a lot of other people, you know, they, they, they remember her because of her tragic death or they saw West Side Story or Splendor in the Grass. But I mean, I think she's been waiting for me to get to the place where I'm, where I feel strong enough, where I can put this out there. Um, you know, you'd say, you'd say you feel like she wants, do you feel like she's still a presence in your life? Huge presence, huge presence. I mean, I'm, I'm lucky because I have her films and I have, you know, photo archives and, and home movies and stuff, but, but it's not just um, that. It's not just that. I mean, I, she's just with me, you know, and, and during the course of this documentary, my, my father, Richard Gregson, passed away in August. He had Parkinson's and, um, you know, so now both my parents are in heaven and, and I feel like this, this film will premiere on HBO on May 5th, which is my father's birthday. And, and I just, I just feel that they're both with me all the time. That's, a, that's wonderful. So, um, how, how did you approach this in terms of bringing this story to life? That's a, it seems like it's a very delicate process. Yeah, I mean, you know, unlike narrative cinema, documentary is really hard because you, you, you can set a goal for yourself and it will evolve inevitably. Um, the thing that I knew I didn't want to do was a chronological kind of exploration year by year, uh, sort of what movie is the making of the film. I really wanted to find a voice and sort of a straight through line. Um, and that voice was Natasha. And when we met for the first time, what emerged for me was like, yes, it's a story of Natalie Wood, it's a story of Hollywood, but it's a story of a family. And as a filmmaker, it was very empowering for me to look for the emotional journey that viewers, young people who may never have seen a film by Natalie Wood or never even heard of her, would immediately be engaged and want to maybe rediscover her film, but to approach it in that viewing, you know, through um, the eyes of her family and uh, um, understand, you know, that behind the facade of this beautiful actress was a mom, an incredible wife, and someone who had a short life but gave so much. The, um, in making this, in making this film, and I was, uh, 
talking a little bit about this with the women um, who are in, uh, on the record, the Kirby Dick film. Um, do you feel like this is also a way to sort of take back the narrative, the the media narrative that's con that's gone on around you? Absolutely. I, my mom doesn't have a voice anymore, but I do. And I do want to take back the narrative because it's gotten out of control. Um, and because I don't think anybody can really do it the way I can do it because I have the relationships with the people. I have all the, the, the I have it all. So I wasn't, it hadn't occurred to me really until I became a mother and started to feel, you know, very protective and, And there's so much in it, you know, there, there is so much that people don't know about her. So it's just from that aspect, it's, there's so many reasons why, um, but absolutely to take back the narrative and, and, and write the narrative, write it, you know, from not write it, but write it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay. Um, do you feel like there's anything, um, do you feel like there's anything that you can, because I don't know the specifics of how this works, anything that you can do in terms of how the uh, Los Angeles authorities are approaching this or dealing with this? Or is this just your reaction? It's like, I can't control that, but I can control this. Yeah, for me, um, I feel like the best way that I can take control of everything is by making this documentary. I've also written a book that's coming out in May called More Than Love about my relationship with my mom and my grieving process. And and so I I go I get into all of that in the book and in the documentary. And um, it's my my wish that this noise can soften and the true, you know, you know, trueness of my mom can come forth. And I think the people that have trumped it all up, they will probably. <laughs> because light is stronger than dark. So we're bringing the light.